So good evening, uh, Prime Minister, Excellencies all, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the poet, I believe it's Robert Frost, said, the forest wood is dark and deep, and I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. And I start there because when I exchanged my greetings with Sergeant Marinard, I said to him, at last, because many may not remember but while he was a police officer, he was the close protection officer for the uh, then ambassador to Haiti, Jean Uri. And while his wife was on a shopping trip at City Soleil in, uh, Haiti, in Haiti, uh, she was uh, attacked and ultimately shot. And he was the protection officer at the time. And at that time, we had no particular reward, so to speak, for someone who was in that position, but he had done an exemplary job in defending her. And I promised then that we would do something to reward him for that service. That's almost 10 years ago, is it? And so, at last, we did the plaque. We had to pass an act. We did the regulations. And uh, since that time, we've even amended the law for a National Bravery Medal, which he's gotten. And so I'm really pleased uh, that we were able to do this this evening, and for all the other recipients. And the lesson I draw to those who are coming behind me and anxious that things will change in the moment and in the twinkling of an eye, which sometimes it does, is that sometimes change takes a long time, and you've just got to keep at it. And secondly, I'd like to make the point that Toni Morrison, I said this before as well, so forgive me if you've heard it before. Toni Morrison, the Nobel Laureate, was speaking to the New York Times, and she was defending the women's movement and their demand that the nomenclature affecting women in public life should change. And she said about this fact, she said this, when you have power, you get to name things. And I always adopted that as well. So we have power, and we decided to name things. We named these medals after all of my predecessors who were ministers of foreign affairs, to thank foreign service officers for the work which they do every day, which is often unsung. And I say again to the younger ones that if you look at the life of all of these people who are honored here tonight, you see that all of them, as Shakespeare said, suffered the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, but they took up arms against the sea of troubles and ended them. And I want to thank them for that, but I also want the younger ones to draw this lesson, that in the Foreign Service, you are a public figure, and being in public life demands a certain tenacity and a complete understanding and confidence in yourself as a person. And that confidence then translates itself into confidence about your country. So if you don't have the confidence in yourself, and it is even a more difficult atmosphere that you have now with social media, this is not the job for you. You have to be able, as they say in our lexicon in the Bahamas, to hold your head. Again, thank you for all those who've given the service. The medals came about one evening I was at an American reception for independence. And I looked around, here were these diplomats representing the most powerful country in the world. And all of them had arrayed on their lapels medals which they had gotten from the State Department for their service as Foreign Service officers in the U.S. State Department. And I thought to myself, this is such a uh, small gesture. Why would a country with all of this power, these people take such pride in receiving this medal? And that's because their country is saying to them, you did good, and we thank you for the service that you gave. And I said, the Bahamas can do that for its diplomats. 
and it's taken a long time. The medals were designed uh, in the UK. It took about a year or so to get them designed. Uh, this is my third stint at this job, and it took the third stint to actually get it done. Uh, so, again, the lesson is, it takes time. So, congratulations to you all. I want to acknowledge, with thanks, grateful thanks, all of my predecessors who have served in this job as minister. And we stand this evening on their work. And you who represent us on the front line, I've, I've uh, described you to our Prime Minister on a previous occasion as the troops, the generals. We have no military might. We cannot dictate things in economic terms. But what we have is our voice, and you are our voice overseas. And you do a good job at it, notwithstanding what anyone else says. So thank you again, Prime Minister. It's a special honor for you to be here this evening to witness this period of, in, of significance in our history. And like no other prime minister that I've worked with, and I've worked with all of them except one, uh, you have embraced the role of the Foreign Service and its important role for the advancement and development of our country. And all of our diplomatic staff appreciate that support. And so you're here again this evening to give that support, and it's my honor now to call you and address us. Please stand.